Let's talk about this article then. We'll make this the first transition. So obviously Richard's doing a series. It's called the Esports Iron Curtain in sort of like similar to the video I made back when the conflict first started in like February or whatever. And basically the premise of it is he's outlining how like once the conflict began, how the sanctions began to be applied and I'll play But one of the key points he makes, and this is something I, I found very alarming as soon as I heard they were putting sanctions on certain teams. So people might know Virtus Pro, Gambit, obviously Virtus Pro became outsiders for the tournaments. Gambit sold their players. Now I'll just say this for the, for, for the sake of technical accuracy, they sold their players to an Norway Norwegian talent agency who then sold them to Cloud9. But it's convenient how that happened, isn't it? It's almost like Cloud9, one of the many... You can see what I think. So anyway, right? <laughs> what the key point is this. These other massive organizations, by virtue of being so large-scale, these are obviously some of the best teams in Counter-Strike, got punished for having these top Counter-Strike teams but, have, but being Russian-owned or connected with oligarchs mm-hmm. or having sponsors that are oligarchs or energy companies with those connections. Because remember, by the way, do I even need to say this? If normal companies have connections in China to the government and in Russia to the government, do you think energy companies don't? Do you imagine they're the ones like, oh, it's like an ice cream truck, just let him go around. Like, you know, your fucking mind, like those got pipelines. Spoiler, that's what half the shit's even fucking about, if you bother following these stories. So anyway, right, one of the points he made, which is a very apt one, I even thought the same thing myself was, when we were at the major seminar, one of the teams I was following, they were actually quite a canny little upset team, they looked like they were going to make it to the top eight and everything, was Forza, of course, the team that have always been like the king of tier two in Russia. Now, if people don't know, one of their main sponsors the whole time is Luke Oil, and as far as I know, they have those connections themselves, but bizarrely, and no one's ever, this is why, by the way, you need shows like this, and crucial you need Richard Lewis and this work because where is the platform? Like, where is the sort of like White House press thing where I can go and go, excuse me, Mr. ESL, why is Force allowed to play in your tournaments even though, like, there's no way you can do that, by the way. Like, you have to just create that news yourself or get the person on record. So I actually find that disgraceful, the idea that, because it wasn't just them, they were the most famous example. As far as we can tell, there were a bunch of teams, especially if you expand it to like the online qualifier before the major, there will have been a bunch of teams that had these connections. And basically all you've done is capriciously fuck over VP and Gambit basically, because yeah. they're too good. They're just too good at the game. So because they're really good, they get banned. And then the others just get to fucking play in the tournament anyway. Yeah, yeah we'll you realize you haven't sent a message there. The message you've sent there is like, I'll just fucking capriciously fuck with one set of people, but I won't actually like apply any sort of a standard to the industry. And I won't, for example, remember, this is also where I always try to make these key points. When you pretend to do something and you don't, you also make a mockery of what you're pretending to do. So that's even worse, Semler. What you've done there is pretend I care so much, in this case, about Ukrainian lives, that I'm going to sanction esports companies from Russia in the hope that by some sort of bizarre, like, trickle-up de-economics, it fucks Putin up and he stops the war. That's the implication, right? Yes, that's if how you then go out there... And you just take two people and go, you sit out. And then the rest of you go, who gives a fuck about that? You obviously don't care about the lives, do you? Wait, then, by the way, spoiler, I know obviously no lives will be saved by sanctioning CS teams. But the premise is you're doing an exercise, you're making a public gesture that's supposed to be in line with what you believe in. It's like You have to understand when you do that, it's not even about the idea of me saying like, you've done a bad job. Like For your own fucking good conscience, surely you have to do this right. Surely if you're going to apply something strict about that, you've got to make sure, like, let's make sure, like, same with any law, that it is applied appropriately to everyone involved, whether they are big or whether they are small. Because in this case, it isn't about that you're big, is it? Like, it's not like, well, VP makes so much more for Putin that he can keep the war effort. No, that's obviously not the case, is it? The fucking <laughs> shitty little team. No, but, the, the, I mean, I could obviously make a fucking banger joke about James saving the office or some shit like that, but even that doesn't fucking make <laughs> any sense, does it? Right, right. It doesn't really apply in real life. It's a fucking video game, boys. So I have to say... That whole topic to me, the reason why that depresses me a little bit is because this is also, this is the power, but also the lack of power that Richard's had in his career. He can make us all aware of this, but even he can't do anything about it. Like, like unfortunately, this info is known. So the best we can do is speak like me and you can know it and sort of keep it in the back of our mind and go, ah, but you won't tell the truth. But ESL's not going to do anything because of this. Companies that have sanctions aren't going to do anything because of this. I imagine, by the way, in the future, this is the thing I'm interested for. I want to know in the future if they'll do this with other global conflicts, if they'll just decide, right, well, this particular, because that's the angle no one ever talks about. You know what's that? What they never talk about is this. This is basically a trial run for what they're probably going to do in the future with the current thing. What will happen is this, if I had to guess, we can do a little segue in a little tangent, by the way, a little sidebar if you want. Basically, whoever is against the American 
Anglosphere Empire, which is the one that controls all the media we all view, they will just label you as oh, the enemy and evil, order. and and they'll say you do war crimes. They'll say all those things. They'll have that big checkbox. They do. By the way, it's convenient, isn't it, Samuel? How in my lifetime, every enemy of the United Kingdom and USA, hundred percent war crimes. They're always just twenty four seven war crimes. All this, the joke almost is like that old Bill Hicks part. It's almost like, what do you need? Like a dog? There you go, he's fucking dogs. There you go, Lord, oh, fucking he hates dogs. Like the joke is, you just you, you just keep and grabbing for stuff till you find what I'm going to be outraged by. Like the premise is, like I actually get the vibe. This isn't the end. Like I know for this, look in Europe, it probably is. We're not, we don't might have many wars in Europe, but they're going to probably start doing this with other countries as well. Well, we're like now it starts to get fuzzy. The line between uh, governments and corporations. Yeah, that's, of course. The, that's the really weird one. Sure. It's like all of a sudden corporations are just going to arbitrarily decide. Actually, we're just going to cut off that country uh, completely. And you know, the governments may be trying to negotiate some kind of peaceful thing or whatever. But like now, now you have this weird thing where you can actually have just corporations that are deciding forward in policy and just say like, actually, yeah, we're going to shut off all of our services over there. Yeah, no matter exactly. if that's actually going to put yes. thousands of people out of business or out of work. And, you know, who knows if they live or die, you know, when we're so concerned about human lives, you know, like we're going to put people into uh, unbearable situations because of that. Um, th that's that is the future. That is actually what it looks like is, is going to be the case. And we, it feels like we see that more and more with the influence of social media. Yes. Where all of a sudden, it's like, how is it perceived by people in social media and whether or not they approve or not is what actually decides if a case even happens or not. We're seeing that all the time as well. So it, it does kind of freak you out. Because like there, there were these concepts enshrined in uh, in our in our governments or in our past, you know, uh, the idea of like you know you're you're innocent until proven guilty. You know that just goes out the window now if it's going to be case oh, reports sure. and people just get to decide if you're guilty or not just based on whether they like what you say or not. You know, holy shit, you know that that's going to open up a whole can of worms where you can just get destroyed overnight because you said something wrong that yes. somebody disagreed with, and there's nothing that uh, there's no um, no no uh, what jury of your peers that's going to be able to save you at that point. You're you're screwed. Um, if that's the path, like it feels like that's the path we're going down. So again, it's kind of like, it's going to be really interesting because esports is so closely tied to social media and basically just, you know, half of it pretty much just lives on social media at all times. All these communities are completely connected online. Um, it feels like we're going to, we're going to be on the cutting edge of all of this in esports because that's what's like, ruined it, it all, mate. A, like Sorry? what I think's actually ruined it is exactly that esports, just like every other. This is how, it, right? Good news, everyone. We're not in the mainstream yet, and we never probably will be. But we're 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 even closer than we were before. We're like right on the fringe of the mainstream. Like basically, esports now is where UFC was, like say five years ago. It's like it's like at the edge of the consciousness. People know the most famous people. Maybe they know like the biggest fight, but they don't follow it like mm -hmm. religiously, right? But here's the, the good news. The good news is we're at that point. The bad news is, like every other aspect of culture, it's now part of the stupid culture war and so this is the, re the reason i bring this up is this because richard often mentions this and i realize he, most fans won't be old school enough to know what he means by it right richard would always make the point that the reason why he finds like this for example the whole thing between russia and ukraine and section the russians the reason he finds that so disappointing is because first of all you're not having a meaningful effect on their economy so you're not like in a practical sense saving lives but more importantly you are sort of in a sense villainizing just anyone who happens to be Russian. And basically the premise that me and Richard in the esports we came up in, the vibe was very much more almost like a hippie vibe. You remember it was, it was supposed to be that esports was what transcended stupid shit. Like yes. your country, your culture, your yes. sex, your fucking uh, identity. The idea was you could go onto the internet. And th I mean, the most extreme example was you could just be like a paraplegic. And in theory, as long as you can play the game in some way with some thing, no one knows that you've got game, you play the game, play or play with you. It's fun. The famous examples in the past, were you would have events where i mean the most famous example ever was you would have like a competitor from palestine and a competitor from israel and they'd go to like the world cyber games or something and they'd do a, a, a you know like a photo op where they'd handshake and show that like you know we are just gamers we are not about the politics you know we are just kids playing yeah. games and that used to be by the way at the time aside from just like feel good wholesome material it used to actually make you think like fuck maybe there's like a future to esports as more than just games like maybe it can be like a something that bridges people because the premise was the reason why in real life those people are at odds is because they're not in any way connected are they they live in different countries or they're separate or they have different identity groups and they're all talking in their own little circles whereas the game brings them together and gives you the community but i, I have to say that's gone gonna... though now dude like now it feels yeah. like we've gone the other way because i have to say 
before we even got into the country stuff, all the SJW stuff ruined all that. That immediately divided everyone. That immediately mm-hmm. balkanized the entire space. That immediately took, literally, like there would be women I was working with on issues in the scene. Suddenly that woman has to be against me and then someone else has to be against mm-hmm. me. And then if this guy's gay, he has to be against me. And if this guy's just not British, you know, like they just divided everyone. They just, they fractured the whole thing. And it feels like that's just got to continue. This is just a, a, a sort of new version of it, I think. I think uh, it, or you're going to have to be very consistent with how you get the message across or like how you keep pushing your message. Right. And I think that's like, if anything, I regret about like the whole ESL drama thing is that I didn't keep pushing because I did. I did end up having a, a couple of female pros onto my uh, Vilga and, uh, Mo- and Goose Breeder, two elite uh, female CS pros, brought them onto my show. And we had a very great, like an entertaining discussion for an hour and a half on the topics. You know, just like, hey, let's let's work through this. I want to hear your perspective on it because you've got so much experience in the scene. Fill me in. Am I missing anything? Right. I wasn't just like, oh, uh, th- you know, this is how I see it. And, you know, screw everything. And it, no, it was very much about having a discussion. So I think we, if we can continue to like push in that direction of having discussions and trying to have long form discussions, maybe we can start to try and push it back the other way. But that, that I think maybe this is why you, uh, you, myself, Richard, uh, some of the older hands in the scene, uh, and, and including I've had this conversation with other guys who have just straight up retired, who have like who are just completely out of the esports scene now and doing other things, you know, where for, where it's just like when 10 years ago, it was a certain way where it was very much like a in the, today you have to kind of add that classical in front of it, but like classical liberal where, you know, freedom of speech, just express yourself. It doesn't matter. And more importantly, meritocracy. Uh, it was very much just like, are you good at the game? Uh, if you play Counter Strike, can you click heads? I don't care, you know, any of the other details about you don't matter at all. Like the only thing I care about is whether you're a good teammate who can play and who doesn't rage his tits off and you know and who just clicks heads. You can do that. Fantastic. Let's game, right? Same with WoW. You know, wow, do you know your role? Do you know the boss fight? Do you know all this sort of stuff? Cool. Can we clear this raid? Can we clear this instant? Awesome. We had a great time. Great. Doesn't matter if you're a chick, a dude, whatever. Like, none of that matters. And so it wasn't until we got to our first dream hack. That was also, it was like so special back in, back then, you know, it was like dream hack, you know, you would show up and it's like, you're meeting everybody. Oh, it really was a gaming festival. Like if people it don't was realize festival. It was that like, angle oh, back then, that's not like oversold. If you were a gamer and you've just spent your whole life in your bedroom, that is like going like, holy, it's like burning man for gamers or something. Yeah. It's like, it's the it's the it event. Was awesome. Yeah, for sure. It was awesome. And all of a sudden it's like, oh man, you know these guys for like two, three years or whatever. You've just been talking on TeamSpeak and playing in lobbies. Yes. And now all of a sudden you're having a beer with each other after the games. And it was just like totally awesome. But you didn't care like where anybody was from. There was 15 different nationalities in the room together. Who cares? We're all having a good time playing the game, right? That really brought things together, brought people together. And so maybe that's why we get a little bit frustrated or a little jaded or whatever with how things are going now in the sense that we remember a time when none of that other stuff mattered. It was all just about the game and having fun and being good to, uh, good to each other for the most part. Dude, I would even say explicitly didn't matter. Like if people don't know another angle, like again, I know people can try and misinterpret all these things the way they want, but I don't care. I've got space to talk, right? Basically, another thing I think that actually ruined esports, I know they're going to take this as like, oh, he wants to bring back like saying slurs or some stupid shit like that. <laughs> but no, it's the premise that actually what you would do is in just a very in, uh, informal manner, you would actually make fun of th- these topics as a way to break the ice. Like if people don't know, I've once told this story, just, it's a funny like Thorian anecdote, that I once went to a Dream Act when I was like working CS Govents, this is like in the 2010s. And they, you know, when you get on like the plane, you get off the plane at fucking Gothenburg, you have to get driven like, two and a half hours or something in a fucking van, right? That's right. So Dream Hack obviously would pick up, like, not just me, I have to go with, like, a fucking Quake player that's going and then some Warcraft 3 guy, whatever year it was, you know, like, Starcraft 2 probably. And they had a bunch of these people, and one of them was, like, a guy who was from Israel. He was, like, some Quake live player from Israel. Whatever. And obviously the first thing I said, because I'm going to have to sit for two hours with this fucking guy, so I just turned to him and go, so why do you hate Palestinian people then? Like, you know, as a, <laughs> as a fucking, like, joke opener. Because obviously all he did immediately was go, no, 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 I don't. What do you mean? I never said that. And then I was just like, I'm just fucking with you, mate. Obviously, you know, and then we started all having a good convo and it was like a laugh never went. if people don't know this is a real quality that makes me know by the way that like SJW type people or people in esports who talk about privilege etc always come from privilege themselves here's how you know Samler because if you've ever worked a real blue collar job where you're all just doing some shit job where you like lift this thing and put it over here or you just screw this thing here everyone who works those jobs it's all sorts of like races different like fucking backgrounds and they all do that Samler they all just light heartedly banter 
each other. That's the way you get through the day. Because the yeah. premise goes, especially for men, the way you deal with things being shitty is you just sort of make them funny. You make it some banter. You make it some silly crack of just saying some stupid shit to this guy or blah, blah, blah. But, you know, and so as a result, if you're Irish, you're making fun of this guy from this country and he's making fun of the fact you're Irish. You're probably going to get a drink after this or whatever, you know. Like, that's actually, it's not what people presented as now as like some super harmful thing. That's actually like social fucking lubricant. And by the way, in esports, that doesn't exist now. I think that's even part of why these everyone's so fractured because here's the scenario you can't even have certain conversations because they've intentionally booby trapped them all yeah, where for it. example for me and you to have a conversation about women in esports we have to first address do we hate women well why would that even be the initial premise our careers show we don't our lives and our friend groups show we don't like that's just a, that what's genius about that is that's a great distraction i mean we never get to the actual combo we never actually have an interesting discussion about this topic which we waste our time in sort of an, a fucking anterior room fighting goons like the fucking henchmen we, we, we never get to the final boss so the entire time and it's no longer fun you know like you had these crazy green rooms in the past where anything goes you know no cameras no recording because you know we're just going off the walls and uh and then it turns into just a scenario where it's uh, it's eggshells like i had to like that was one of the things and from overwatch league season one to two you know it, it the, the the atmosphere changed uh because certain people were brought sure. on and then all of a sudden it's like everybody's walking on eggshells nobody's saying anything you're super careful you're just talking about the game just talk about a watch and, and and no no jokes no nothing and uh and and you know that that's it just takes away completely from the soul of the thing which is you know just about having a fun and a good oh time. there's no camaraderie yeah exactly seriously. yeah you know, the, the camaraderie goes so because you know that's yeah. an area i saw i saw people tried to spin this against you actually funnily enough right around because obviously there's that stupid journalist woman who said that utterly inappropriate thing where she just revealed something you said in a press room oh yeah don't worry one day i'll do know, a video exactly because it's one of the all moment thing is I though that, that, that right? if i ever do a video it'll be one of the all-time great slams because this woman looks so stupid if you know anything actually about esports but the people who don't thought they could slam me because they were like well you were in a press room he wasn't in front of a microphone, you dumb fuck. It wasn't a press conference of Semla. Like, that logic, for real, like, she's implying, by the way, that if when Semla was sat next to her and she just took, like, a phone call and she was, like, talking to her dad, like, oh, yeah, and then I might see you on the weekend, it'd be fine for Semla to just put on Twitter, like, oh, Liz has seen her dad on the weekend. Like, how would that be appropriate, you fucking idiot? That's yeah, not totally exactly. off the record. Like, you have in no way or in any good faith engaged with that person to put their words on the record. So, anyway, the, the point isn't what you said, but the point is, like, in that scenario, right, Oh, I can't remember where I was going with that. What was I going on about there? Oh, we're all over. <laughs> where were we at on that point more? Well, think. that point is that point is just about how things can get taken out of context uh, or people are willing to... Oh, that was it. Because here's the problem, though. When you say that, though, about like the way you were describing... Like, um, what was it you were saying, though, just before that about things getting taken out of context? Fuck, I'm trying to think how I was going to describe it. <laughs> no, the problem is that I get so wrapped up in your story that I forget... Oh, right, I, I see. To. Okay. And I'm just like, I'm just along for the ride at that point. Like, where are we going with this? shit well i mean i think uh a lot I'll oh i know what it was here's the point i want to make right what they will do unfairly because and by the way if you wonder what do you mean they and why do you keep saying like this because the same fucking literal playbook is run by these people in their thousands for eight years now you morons you just don't pay attention you're the guy who's like i'm the guy who just started paying attention today I want, you know what i think we need to maybe have a conversation about if schools have gotten out of control you're so far behind the fucking pace mate like <laughs> you, don't talk. you just quiet down a second and let us get to this core because here's the core point to make right what they'll do and i've seen this happen many times sometimes when you say that that it ruins the camaraderie they'll always spin it like this like oh see so now that the sexist guy doesn't feel comfortable suddenly he has to like feel what it's like to be the man no it's not like that at all because here's the thing it never was the case that those green rooms were like people there like oh i'm gonna they weren't walking on eggshells around us by the way they weren't having a bad time everyone was having a brilliant time that's why if you ever look by the way those are also some of the people who never come out against people like me and richard people who were in those green rooms because they know who we actually are they've gone they've been in the trenches with us for hours and hours having the real conversations having fun chats get literally get them normal on the personal level so actually it's the other way around people will try and pretend like rc ah, that's what happens when you know like the cis white male has to finally like adjust to other people no it's the other way around what you want for real and it's what they've always wanted there's a bigger political point you could tie it to here is they want the tiniest fraction to tyrannize the rest of the majority and everyone else in that room has to always be thinking what is this one person they included here who's going to make an issue out of it what are they going to do if i make that comment what are they going to do if i make a joke what are they going to do if something just happens that we're all seeing on the tv that's that's what ruins the vibe it's nothing to do with like we wanted like the old boys club or whatever we don't if people don't know there were loads of women in these green rooms some of the coolest 
people in these green rooms. People you would know, people, by the way, who publicly maybe don't even publicly align with us, but they're all cool people. We used to have brilliant camaraderie. So, by the way, that's also another reason why I know personally I've started to just turn down more and more events as the years went on. It was also that you'd go to the event and you were like, oh, this isn't even the event though. Like half of what I enjoyed was the camaraderie. It was seeing the same people, seeing cool. And when you go and it's all the newer people or it's the people who have a million fucking, put it this way, where they, like, they're trying to tell their whole life story in the fucking Twitter bio. Like those people, you can't have a great time with them, mate. Guess what? They are fucking paper thin caricatures. Like there's not there, mate. There's, you just poke a hole in it. There's nothing behind it. They're great. So you really are like that, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if this is just like a part of things moving and evolving and get, becoming more corporate as well, though, because I feel like not like oh, having, for sure. worked, having worked with a corporation now in Blizzard and where it just seems like this is all par for the course. Like those people have already they've already made it past this stage uh, into just uh, accepting it. Right. Like they're they're cool with the fact that you can't have any camaraderie. Or cool. Oh, we were definitely they're, they're, they're sort of like that. we were sort of like a little bit lucky that we got to stay in that oasis for a while. Cause you're right. Essentially so. like HR behavior means you can never do any of that stuff anyway. Of course, yeah, like that's, exactly. that is essentially what they've inserted in Wii Sports. I mean, in your case, the reason for Overwatch makes sense is because for that one, you weren't just hired event by event. You were actually like, you worked for the company. So at that yeah. point, yeah, they're, they're just going to apply the same stuff. They apply to the guy fucking the janitor, we, aren't they? We didn't have to sit through, uh, we, we did have to sit through a sexual harassment. Um, uh, like once, once per season, we had to sit through a sexual harassment meeting where it was a couple of uh, shit eating lawyers just standing there. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.